first jank brew of the murders at Karloff standard, standard format. Uh, the, the set has been out for three days. I missed the first day of playing all together. The second day, I had a roof being replaced over my head, and so it was too loud and ruckusy to stream this. However, <laughs> I played it while the roofing was going on, and it went 9-1 in, in, in Diamond Standard Ranked. And I was so excited to stream, and then I streamed it later uh, last night, and it went 1-6 in six on stream, and then there was an issue with that stream. So here I am attempting to play this Boros Kellen Sword deck for the third time. I don't think it's a 9-in-1 deck, despite its performance. I don't. I hope it's not a 1-in-6 deck, uh, but this is a brew from that started in last format. Uh, it was just clearly not good enough. I've been trying to make Kellen work in standard for a little while. And it was clearly not good enough, not even good enough to like throw up on jank brewers and lose the whole time. Um, we, we brew jank here, but we we expect the jank to be decent enough that we're, you know, hopefully in that like two wins out of seven uh, at least category. Um, and so here we go. We're going to walk through Boros Sword, starting with Kellen the Fae Blooded, the uh, namesake card here. Kellen has uh, an adventure ability called Birthright Boon that we want to use a lot. Search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle. Kellen uh, himself is a 2-2 two, two for 3 with double strike. Other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fae Blood. So he's his own sort of combo here. Um, and we're going to go from Kellen to the targets for the Birthright Boon ability. Starting with the enchantments. So we have just a couple of enchantments here, but auras are are tutorable by Kellen, and we've got Draconic Destiny as a one of. This is an enchant creature where the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. It has flying haste and fire breathing, essentially. Pay one, creature gets plus one, plus zero to the end of turn. This works really well with Kellen, because if you've got a flying version that can pump that power up, uh, so it's got evasion and the ability to you know, at least in the following turn, go to... Sorry, my dog is trying to get in here. Uh, six double striking power in the sky is pretty cool, and hopefully you can go more than that by the time you've got it equipped to your Kellen. Um, we've also got in enchantments two copies of Ossification. I'm just going to let the dog in, or this is going to go crazy. <laughs> Sorry, dog. Two copies of Ossification. Um... Awesome that you can tutor this up. Tutoring removal is great whenever you can do it. And uh, we've got enough basics, hopefully, uh, in Plains and Mountains, 10 total, uh, that will hopefully have targets for ossification. So beyond the enchantments, we're, uh, we're looking at swords. And actually, we're going to start from the top. Like The most expensive thing we can tutor up is a dragon wing glider. There's just a single copy here because we are playing 23 lands. Not often that we want to get up to five mana and, and still have plenty of things left to do to win the game. So hopefully it's just this or bust. Um, but this becomes a 4-4 four, four flyer with haste, which we can tutor up off of Kellen. Uh, and then we'll skip to Sword of Forge and Frontier. It is the lesser of the swords in this deck, uh, but sometimes it's great. You get pro red, pro green, plus two, plus two. Uh, whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. You may play an additional land this turn. Uh, so if you're dealing damage with Sword and Forge and Frontier, you're getting a solid bit of value out of it. And obviously, if it's equipped to Kellen, even better, because you got Double Strike going on there. Um, and we'll get to some other ways this deck can give creatures Double Strike uh, beyond Kellen. Uh, same thing with Sword of Once and Future. This is more what we want to be doing. If we're tutoring for a sword, this is probably the one that we're going for, unless we're playing against uh, you know, the red or green colors where we need the protection. Um, but we have a lot of one and two mana instants and sorceries in this deck, which we'll get to later. So this one gives us plus two, plus two protection from blue and black. And whenever equipped cre equip creature deals combat damage to a player, so well too. Uh, then you may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its cost. That spell would be put into your graveyard and exile it instead. So from here, we want to be replaying Lightning Helix. Lightning Helix was the card that I thought maybe makes this deck playable in standard uh, and so we're going go with the full four copies of it. We've also got Obliterating Bolt, we've got uh, a Braid, we've got uh, a Fateful Absence to Destroy Evil, a Flame Blast Bolt, Play with Fire. Uh, so a bunch of uh, little options for sort of once in future uh, that we're hoping to make use of. Onward with 
tutors. We can also tutor a Lizard Blade. Um, it's just a one of. It can give us double strike, obviously. Um, give a creature double strike. Uh, we have a Lion Sash. Um, I don't know how great this card is, but there are a lot of decks right now that are making use of graveyard strategies. So I think a one of is worthy of, a, of an inclusion. I don't think it's a great magic card otherwise. And if you're playing a best of three, this is probably one of the first that's going to come out in any deck that's not got a graveyard synergy. Um, then we're going to move on to arguably the best tutor options, uh, which will surprise you. Rabbit Battery uh, is low-key the MVP of this deck. So not only is it uh, a 1-1 one -one with haste, um, but it can reconfigure and give any creature for one extra red uh, haste, including Kellen, uh, anything else we got going on here. Um, but the reason why it's especially good is uh, Jorkadine. Jorkadine is a 2-2 two -two for 2 with Trample. It says when Jorkadine first Gold Warden attacks, it gets plus X, plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then if Jorkadine's power is 4 or greater, draw a card. Uh, so if you have a Rabbit Battery in play... Jorkadine becomes a 3-mana, 4-4, four, four, trample, haste creature that draws a card when it attacks. That's what you want to be doing, full stop. Even considered adding a fourth copy of Jorkadine. Um, may do that at some point in the future. Uh, so Rabbit Battery pairs really well with that. Obviously with Kellen, you've you've got a 3-3 you know, three, three hasty double striker. Um, we have a single copy of Ar Archangel of Wrath here. I'm going to come back to this because this card in the first two uh, iterations of me playing through this was a different angel. Um but I think it needs the potential for lifelink. Um, and I just want to try this. We, we don't have any black mana. We're not going for it. So it's potentially a five drop that, that pings um, with a little bit of lifelink. Um, just testing out how it goes here. But Eater of Virtue is the other like grand slam of the deck because Eater of Virtue equipped to a rabbit battery gives you a 3-1 uh, attacker, much better than a 1-1. One, one. And if that rabbit battery were to die in combat, oh well, because the rabbit battery will then be imprinted on Eater of Virtue in the form of its haste will be added to Eater of Virtue. Eater of Virtue says as long as a card exile with Eater of Virtue has flying equip... Uh, um, <laughs> flying... I'm just going to read the card. Apologies. As long as a card exile with Eater of Virtue has flying, equipped creature has flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Protection, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. So the creature's going to get 2 plus 0, uh, plus 2 plus 0 when it's equipped, and then anything that dies that has the, uh, the text listed here is going to get imprinted on it such that when you equip Eater of Virtue to a new creature, it gets those static abilities, which is really great, especially for Rabbit Battery. Uh, notice that Jorkadine has Trample, so it would get that. We're playing four copies of Bloodthirsty Adversary because it pairs well with Lightning Helix and the rest of these instants and sorceries. So it would get Haste if it was equipped to a Bloodthirsty Adversary and it were to die. Uh, it would get Double Strike if Lizard Blades dies and it's equipped to it. Same thing with Kellen, would get Double Strike there. Um, we got this Archangel of Wrath, it would get Flying and Lifelink. This guy doesn't really count, unfortunately, because the creature itself is just a 2-2 for Mirrodin token, but pretty much everything that we've got that co could be equipped to Eater of Virtue gets, gets some sort of value there. So beyond that, we've got two copies of Wandering Emperor, just a good magic card overall. Um, and I think the plus one, plus one counters are more use useful in decks where we've got, you know, Kellen and, and Jorkadine um, and, you know, double striking Lizard Blades and things of that nature. Uh, again, this single copy of Archangel of Wrath. This was, I forget the name of the angel, but it was the angel that allows you to play uh, up to three mana cost stuff from your graveyard. Um, just out of curiosity, just seeing if it would work well with, with Kellen. Um, unfortunately, you couldn't use the adventure ability with Kellen. Um, and we just didn't as often have a need for that. So I think Archangel of uh, Wrath is going to be better. And uh, we've gone through the instants and sorceries. Oh, one last thing is the mana base. Uh, I think the mana base is the reason why this deck is never going to be a 9 and one deck, uh, despite that actually happening in um, Diamond. But the reason is we need a, we need the fast lands. We need um, untapped red and white sources early on, and because the red white fast land is not in standard, I think we're really going to struggle with doing exactly what we want to do when we want to do it. Uh, but we're playing twenty three lands here. Um, without further ado, let's see if we can go nine and one, or not go at least one and 